I thought I'd introduce the video to centralized and decentralized systems by bringing you to Central Park. Central Park, New York City. It's central. Let go of what you thought a decentralized system was or a centralized system was just for a minute. I'm going to give you a way to think about it that's very clear and simple and logical. Okay, so for starters, I just want to warn you that in reality, all things are complex and messy and nothing is ever perfect. So nothing is ever completely centralized or completely decentralized. Okay, we're going to start off with centralized systems. Now, what is a system? We should probably just define that first. A system is just a set of things. It, it actually doesn't even need to be a coordinated set of things. You could just pick, you know, 20 things out of the dictionary, lump them together and say, these are things. And then that's a set and that's a system. You could put those things in a, you know, write them on a piece of paper and that's a system. It's a bunch of words or, you know, actually have a bunch of objects in a collection and that's a system, even if they're basically totally un unrelated to one another. Um, that kind of system I would just call a disconnected system, which you could say is non-centralized. The only thing holding it together is the fact that you've put this into a set. So in a sense, that's a centralized set because you've centralized these things. You've put them together and you've decided they are a set. However, that's not a very interesting set. So that kind of system, I'm not going to talk about. Okay. Now for a regular centralized set of things, what we care about is the relationship between these things in such a way that they have shared rules. And now the rules are the ways that these things exist or behave, function, you know, whatever, whatever you're thinking of, um, whatever they do, however they are in the universe. So it's this relationship between the rules that they're obeying, that they're using to function. If they tend to move all in the same direction. They all have the same goal. They all have the same function. They all have the same set of rules. Then they will be easily predictable um, as long as you know those rules. So you, for example, um, everything moves to the left. You know, you have a bunch of things and they're all going to move left. You know, maybe they move different uh, amounts to the left each time they move, but they're all moving in the same direction. So that would be a centralized system as far as the direction goes. And then you could all, you could predict easily that all of these things, that the whole system itself is going to slowly move left, right? Not right. <laughs> yes, left. Now, obviously each individual thing is unique and uh, in reality, is going to do something slightly different. But in general, a system where you can find an identifiable rule that makes a prediction for something to move in a certain way, something to do something specific, and they all do that same thing, then it's centralized, or at least that rule is centralized. Okay, so now there are two ways to have a centralized system. One way is, of course, they all have the same rule. And that would be essentially an authoritarian or totalitarian system, um, which is what we call top down. So the same rule applies to everyone equally, and they're all following the same rule. Now, in a democratic centralized system, it's slightly different where that each individual each individual has the option to be able to change the centralized rule. Say, 
all of your friends get together to go out to a restaurant and uh, but you haven't decided on a restaurant yet so you throw out a bunch of different ideas and then at some point um, hopefully you all decide on a single restaurant to go to so that would be a democratic centralized system it's no longer um, authoritarian totalitarian because uh, it's not being imposed on you or it's not something that you initially universally shared it's a new it's you contributed you each contributed to the agreement to share those rules so that's a democratic centralized system which most of the time if we're using a centralized system um, and it's involving humans that's the kind we want not always um, sometimes for example with um, a classroom and somebody is you know teaching you there's a teacher standing up front uh, telling you what the rules are I mean, not all classrooms are like this, but I'm, I'm saying, uh, for example, if they're teaching you a language, uh, then the teacher is the one giving the rules out and saying, this is how you speak the language. None of these systems are bad. None of these systems are inherently good or bad. They're just useful for different purposes. Um, so we have the centralized systems, authoritarian or totalitarian is probably a better term. And then also the democratic sort of consensus-based voting. Where it's a bottom-up and top-down process. So we have the ability to change the centralized set of rules um, as individuals. That doesn't guarantee that we do, but we have the opportunity to do so and, and all of the individuals together sort of generate an agreement, which then everybody follows. And now this is similar to a decentralized system, which is where a lot of people get very confused. So I'm going to tell you the difference. In a decentralized system, there is no top-down at all. There is no shared set of rules. There is only the individuals deciding for themselves what to do. Now, obviously, there will be some overlap because as individuals, we are, you know, similar. There are many similar things, even between humans and bananas. You know, there's some shared set of rules. You know, we're living organisms um, with proteins and such. So, you know, no system could ever be perfectly decentralized. Um, even the laws of physics, obviously, were pretty sure at some point they're, they're universal. Um, you know, maybe they're not, but certainly at some point above human beings, there's a kind of universal centralized set of physics that are ap applicable to all of us. Um, but beneath that, there uh, there's a, a lot of decentralization going on in, in living organisms. So we get to the point where some people say, well, a decentralized system that you're like you're talking about couldn't possibly exist. That would be just chaos. Well, yes, that's exactly what it is. It's a chaotic system. Um, but a chaotic system still has function. Our bodies are chaotic. Um, the individual cells in our bodies, we have, you know, 10,000 different species in our bodies of bacteria. And then we have our own two sets of genes um, and they all have different rules and the mitochondria mitochondria obviously have very different rules than the rest of them because they're they have a very small gene set genome whatever you call it so we have all of these different individual cells doing their own thing all these different species and then each cell has its own different cell expression or not every single cell necessarily, but most of the cells have a different cell, ex a gene expression in the cells. So for example, your skin cells are a very different kind of cell than your bone cells. Um, and your hair cells are different and you know your um, blood cells are different. And so all of them are doing their own thing. There are some shared rules, but for the most part, 
they're different but the whole thing congeals into this body into this individual single body that looks like a centralized system except that if you look at it with a magnifying glass or with a microscope or with an electron microscope um, you'll see especially at the DNA level and especially at the protein level they're all doing totally different things so it's very decentralized it's very chaotic it's very unpredictable and that is the key the key to the difference between a centralized system and a decentralized system a centralized system you can find shared rules that make it predictable they make the behavior predictable so that you can say as long as you know the rule you can say okay these things are all you know for the most part going to do X they're all going to go left or they're all going to go you know around in a circle or they're all going to make uh, you know a protein or something like that whereas in a decentralized system it's unpredictable you cannot say what they're all going to do because they aren't all going to do anything specific until it's emergent of what it does so you roll a pair of uh, a set of dice and or maybe like 10 dice you're a whole bunch of dice um, and the outcome you know the numeric outcome and you sum it all up that's going to be different than if you roll the dice another time you know a separate time you roll another 10 dice uh, and you're going to get a different outcome that's a decentralized system you don't know what's going to happen until it actually happens because there's no shared function there's no shared way that these things are all existing the only thing that they're shared is that they're in the same something or other they're in the same set of things and they're relating to one another so all the cells in my body are in my body all the uh, all the dice that I've thrown are the dice that I have thrown so the decentralized system is chaotic it is unpredictable but it's still a system because it's still the individual things in it are still relating to one another and thus it's a fully bottom-up system and it allows things to emerge unpredictably what my body is going to do in the next hour and a half or something you know you can't predict exactly I mean you could do some predictions based on the fact that I'm in a physical you know it's a physical body in a physical space and there's certain limitations on the based on the physics um, of what you know about the environment and everything but you don't know exactly what I'm gonna say you don't know exactly what I'm gonna think you don't know exactly what I'm gonna you know how I'm gonna move my toes or how many times I'm gonna blink you know so it's all very unpredictable in a decentralized system and that's okay that's good because that's actually creativity that allows emergent things to happen so that we get life.